you like them, but you can't. Are you listening? What? Are you listening? Did you bring me on this show to insult me? Yeah. Uh. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh. Yeah. Hey, y'all don't want it with us, uh. man. You straight gangsters over here, Straight gangsters. Uh. Uh. Yeah, what is going on, America? This is Scout Team Radio on 12 Ounce Sports. I am one of your gracious hosts. They call me. Oh, where's my producer at? He's supposed to hit me with my America, America. America, bleep yeah, coming to you to give you the sports news, America, bleep yeah, I'm giving you the sports on this Monday morning, and as you can tell, as normal, it's usually the loud beard, who is one of the most egotistical, self-deluded persons I have ever met, he's usually the one that opens up the show, but he's having technical difficulties right now, the last two weeks, he's been tapping into his inner Chris America. He's been uh, missing recordings. That's something that normally I do. He's been having technical difficulties. That's also something I do. So I'm just waiting for the one morning where he oversleeps and comes in at 618. That's also something that your boy Chris America has done. But while we're waiting for the loud beard, there is so much to talk about. As soon as we get off the air, well, it wasn't as soon as we got off the air. It was probably about... I want to see like 11.30, 11.45 in the morning Friday. We get hit with one of the biggest off-season bombs for the NFL we've had in quite some time. Yes, I'm sure if you've heard the story or if you haven't been living in a cave this whole entire weekend, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's no sense to even tease it. Yes, uh, our boy. Mm, mm, your boy. Yeah, Robert Kraft, what are you doing, man? What is going on in your mind? I, I only got one thing for you, Robert Kraft. You are so dumb. You are really dumb, for real. Yeah, you are completely dumb. We'll get into that when Loud Beer jumps on the mic. We also had a big weekend in basketball. The Lakers were up, and then they were down. And then our my Magic were down, and then they were up. I'm excited to talk about that. We took on... Two teams on both ends of the spectrum, and we played down to the one team, and we played up to the other team. So that was a thing. And then we are going to talk about the Orlando Apollos. We were at the game. We were covering the game. Hopefully you guys saw all of our updates. If not, make sure you're following us at Scout Team Radio, at Scout Team Radio for all of our updates of uh, sports that we're covering, what our next show is going to be, and just stupid tweets. Uh, actually... Follow at Chris America for the stupid tweets. Or sorry, I need to change it to at Chris America. It's at Chris Scout Team, at Chris Scout Team, and uh, at Loudbeard. At him right now. Say I miss you, Loudbeard. Chris America is awful. He can't do the show without you. So please come back and save us all. But until then, you're stuck with me. You're stuck with Chris America by himself. Uh, some hockey went on this weekend. Detroit Red Wings started off hot, melted down against the San Jose Sharks. Miss America, kind of aloof now with the Detroit Red Wings season. They're so up and down that I say, sorry, they lost, babe. And she says, eh, it's whatever. That's what happens when you get deep into a 500 season or a sub-500 season. It's kind of how I've been with the Magic for the last seven years. You get to that point where you become numb to losing. Losing becomes numb to you. And it kind of makes watching that sport bad. It's kind of downplayed the NBA for me. College football for a little while with my Gators being down. They were up and down, up and down, up and down. Made watching college football a little bit more difficult. So we're going to go into that. Um, some movies I watch on DVD. Other movies I stream it, just depending on what's out. And, uh, yeah. What else did I... Oh, I saw that. Uh, Star is... Not that because of the Oscars. I don't watch Oscars. I don't watch award shows. They're even worse than watching uh, Pro Bowls and All-Star Games and things of that sort. They're just, I, they do nothing for me. Just a big, uh, 
I don't. I can't use the phrase I want to use because this is a family friendly show. But it's just a a bunch of people in a circle scratching each other's back. Yeah, we'll call it that. We'll call it a circle back scratch. That's a family friendly term I can use to describe what I think of the Oscars and the Grammys and and all that whatnot. And I, I love watching people react on Twitter like, "Oh, I can't believe this person didn't win." Like, dude, who cares? That person got whatever money they got from. You know, the movies that they made. And they don't need that other validation from other people in that industry. I, I want the validation of the fans. Like, when this podcast hits and it gets big on radio, excuse me. Sorry, I had a cough. Turn off my mic so you guys didn't have to hear that. If this thing ever takes off, it'll be because of you fans. It won't be because some radio critic or radio award show thinks we're great and wants to give us an award. Now, if... If we get that kind of stuff later on down the road, sure, I'll take it. I'll take some hardware to put on the trophy case. But really, I just want to make sure that we're entertaining, that we're providing you guys with some entertaining sports news, that we're a little bit different, that we add value to your day, that we give you like a little bit of an escape from your life for one hour, kind of get away from all of the stress and hassles that maybe you got going on, maybe hopefully make you laugh. That's what my main goal is. And, um, yeah, so I'm not going to need that validation from whoever does award shows for radio. What is it? Is there like an iHeartRadio awards? Um, is there, I don't think there's a radio podcast awards for MTV yet. Maybe I'd want to win that. I would love to win a moon man. That's probably one of the coolest trophies is that moon man trophy. I could go for me for some moon man. So maybe somehow we make a music video. Is it the music video that's the Moon Man, or is it the the movies? See, this is why I need Loudbeard, who's having microphone problems right now. So if you know us, if you have microphone support, please at Loudbeard to help him out. He's trying to get his microphone to work so I can stop talking to myself. Well, I can't wait any longer, Loudbeard. I got to get into this this Robert Kraft story, and I'm going to hit him with another one. You are so dumb. You are really dumb, for real. Yes, Robert Kraft, you are a complete idiot. Oh, he's calling me? Hey, maybe he wants to be on the show. Hold on. Let me set it up here, but um, we have uh, Robert Kraft down in Florida trying to do some Florida man things, and it's not quite working out for him. Here he goes. Yes, caller, you are on the air. Hey, what's going on there, Chris America? Glad to have you on here, Loudbeard. It is an honor and a privilege to have you on. How was your weekend? I'm in here Uh, rambling on about my weekend. Yeah, I I got to listen a little bit to what you were talking about there. I mean, you can start getting into movies and then spaceman awards and all kinds of fun stuff so yeah we're going off the rails today right like this is not our normal morning show this is right right we we typically talk nothing but sports and we're serious and we debate hot topics yeah yeah i mean you were talking to me just yesterday how you're really excited about the green book and how it should be the best movie in all of the land and i i I respect you for your opinion but i disagree yes it really should have been I, I saw the previews and it looked pretty good, so I, f- I feel like it should have won an award. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I don't, honestly, I don't think I've seen any of the movies that won or were nominated. Um, the only one I really want to see is that Star Is Born. I heard that's pretty good, so that's on my list of to dos. I might try to catch that this week or next. Yeah, I saw that yesterday. We got it on Redbox. Just chilled out, ate some breakfast, and watched watched a Star Is Born. It's a pretty solid movie. It, if it, did it win Best Picture? I didn't even see what won, but was it up for Best Picture? Yeah, it was up for Best Picture. The Green Book won. That was the, the winner. Oh, okay, yeah, the uh, one I predicted to win. I, I should I should be getting hit with a genius then, right there, because you said I should, said it should win, and, and I was correct. You're always correct, sir. So the Green Book wins, but the controversy is, is that everybody's saying oh, this was like the fourth or fifth best movie. It wasn't even close that other movies like A Star is Born or Black Klansman or Roma all should have won. Now, I heard Roma was super boring, so I'm not super excited about that winning, 
but I hear good things about A Star is Born. Honestly, I'm like you, Chris America. I could care less about the Academy Awards. But going in to this weekend, that is not the the big event that I was looking forward to. You and I, we got a chance to go out and live the good life over with the Apollos. We want to thank the Orlando Apollos for being very hospitable. But we covered the Orlando Apollos game, and we had a good time this weekend, didn't we? I had a great time this weekend, and uh, honestly, Ant Man and Wasp and the Wasp should have should have won. Loudbeard, since since you're bringing up ones, I mean, fan, the best Marvel movie of all time. Mm. We'll agree to disagree, Chris America. No, you know, I'll, the, I'll the, even agree to disagree with that statement. <laughs> yeah, Ant Man was so disappointing. Uh, I hope I was hoping you would uh, pick up on that sarcasm. Mm, no, I'm, I have no sarcasm meter. I always judge movies about the rewatchability like you can watch a movie once but if you really want to watch it again for a second time to me that means it's a good movie ant-man and the wasp it's been i think it's on hbo or on netflix or something like that and i i look at it and i'm like i don't even want to rewatch it like it wasn't a bad movie but it wasn't a good even, movie right if it didn't have right. paul, that, if it didn't have paul rudd it would have been a total stinker yeah yeah, he, he definitely gives that movie a little validity, uh, the the humor that gets added to it. I mean, again, not a terrible movie, but when you look at the Marvel movies that have come out, it's definitely at the bottom of that list. Now, um, Black Panther was on the top of the list because that was one of those Best Picture-nominated movies, which is surprising because it is a Marvel movie. These Marvel movies don't get the credit that they deserve typically, but Black Panther's getting a lot of accolades. And Avengers for... should have been up there if Black Panther's going to be there. Black Panther's great. Avengers is better. Yeah, Avengers Infinity War to me was the so far the best Marvel movie that's come out. Best comic and... movie, I think, for me. I know a lot of people yeah. love those Batman movies, but uh, no, I'm, I'm Avengers all the way. Yeah, I mean, The Dark Knight, I, I do have some love for that. I I don't know. Maybe one A and one B for me. I can't. I can't really decide. I'm not going to be controversial, but yeah, the Dark Knight and Avengers: Infinity War sitting up there, and, and really the first Avengers is not too far behind it. That was a great movie too. So Avengers have done a good job. Age of Ultron, I, I thought was a little, a little disappointing, but that's because they're building up for this Infinity War, and it felt like that was just a filler movie in between. Yep. Well, Loudbeard, let's. Um, I was getting into publicly shaming Robert Kraft before you called, and I think it's desperately needed that every single radio show should get a chance at publicly shaming uh, Robert Kraft. I know the guys over at Kraft Brood Sports, they were so upset that this story broke on Friday, which is literally the longest day away from when their next show is, and I said, man, you guys got to be so upset that you have to wait a whole entire week to cover this thing. And by then, it might be old. But no, I, I say if, even if your show is next Thursday, roast him anyways. No matter how old that story is, we got to roast this guy. And I saw on Twitter a lot of people saying, stop making jokes because this is involving human trafficking and you're taking it lightly. And I'm, I'm thinking, I think it's the opposite. No, like if you don't make jokes at his expense, you're letting Robert Kraft off for this, for this crime and for taking advantage of these uh, sex slaves and human traffickers and everything else like that. Like... Publicly shaming and being publicly embarrassed is part of your punishment and part of the thing that you owe society. Am, am I off base on this, Loudbeard? No, you're not off base. Uh, there definitely needs to be some awareness as far as that goes. You want the public to, to know what happened and to give their negative feedback, right? So whether that's humor as far as making fun of the guy or chastising him or whatever that feedback is, you need to to voice your opinions. And we're in a society now where we've got so much access to communications where we can voice our opinions wherever we want, whenever we want, whether it's social media or however we do that, or a podcast, other podcasters out there, I'm sure can talk about this too. And you, you sit there and you think, okay, well, what do you want us to do? Be nice to the guy, like give him a, a high five. What, like what would be a better solution to, to these naysayers? Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm totally against, I mean, I, I'm against trying to tell people to stop what they're saying, right? We, we live in, we're freedom of speech people. 
we love America. Uh, Canadians, they like freedom of speech also. But, you know, we, we were founded on freedom of speech. And, you know, people can come out and have their opinions. I hate when the others, the outsiders, are trying to silence our opinions, right? Yeah. So you come on Twitter and you can make a joke. Oh, don't do that. That's disrespectful. Now, unfortunately, we live in a world where it, it really isn't disrespectful. What we're doing is we're bringing awareness, we're bringing communication, and we are enlightening the world of what is going on because there are billionaires out there that take advantage of, of people. And Robert Kraft now is going to be the man in the spotlight that is being the one that I guess is going to be, I don't know how to say the, the, the fall guy for, for all this because the, the NFL, this is a bad look. I mean, this is your Super Bowl winning team, right, Chris America? This is your Super Bowl winning team. This is the best franchise in the last 20 years. The best owner, I would say, because his when you win six championships, maybe you get some of the credit if you're the owner. I don't know how much involvement Robert Kraft has, if he's just a set it and forget it guy, or if he truly is pretty involved in the personnel that gets hired and the players that get brought on. I mean, who knows? But um, I, I just felt like, one, we jumped to human trafficking without even knowing the full-on report of the police. Or maybe they did, I, and I just didn't see it. But if he is involved with this human trafficking, Loudbeard, if it's more than just a guy who went into a massage parlor and there's a masseuse who consensually, this is the life she's chosen, says, you know what, I, for an extra 20 bucks, I'll give you the old uh, R&T, Loudbeard. And this is a family show, and so the adults will know what the R&T means. Um, you know, then that's one thing. It's still a crime, but, you know, the libertarian in me says this is a free society. If a consenting adults want to do stuff in exchange for money, then, you know, who am I to judge? But if this is the human trafficking side of it, if, if you, if you were to walk in and look at this place and it looks seedy as all get out and just, you know, you feel like you need to spray yourself with Lysol when you leave and you just know that this is just not a good place to be where... There's just a lot of nefarious things going on, and you're Robert Kraft, and you're a part of that. Yeah, man, I don't, I don't even know if you should be allowed ownership in the NFL. I, th I think we need to bring Adam Silver in to figure out how we can kick Robert Kraft out if he's knowingly involved in this and partaking in and and distributing to you and and funding this human trafficking situation. Now. There's going to be other names that come out in this. Do you think there's going to be any high-profile, maybe NFL owners, NBA owners, other people that we're going to just our jaw will drop when all of this comes out? Well, that was a story Friday. Is that oh, there's there's more there's more bigger names to come. There's more bigger there's bigger fish to fry. And I was hoping we would get those names before today's show. Now watch is going to drop at like 7:30. We got to wait another 24 hours to talk about it. At least it's 24 hours instead of a whole weekend. But yeah, they said a bigger name. And I know Memphis Benz, he's on 12 Ounce Sports Radio from noon to two. And he's also on the Sports Radio, Ameri or Sports Radio America Network. Um, he was, we were trying to figure out, I was helping him try to figure out names. I said, well, we, first of all, we know it's not Pee Wee Herman because Pee Wee Herman keeps his hands to himself. That's first and foremost. Let's let's start eliminating suspects before we start naming suspects. That's the way I like to start off, Loudbeard. Uh, yeah, Pee Wee Herman off the list. Okay, who else? Who else have you eliminated? Um, I've eliminated myself because I don't travel to South Florida ever. It's just why do I want to drive three hours to stay in Florida? If I'm going to drive three hours, I want to be out of the state, Loudbeard. So I've I've eliminated myself. Okay, I'm out. I've eliminated okay. you. You're out because you were on the radio with me this whole time. Yep, that's true. I can't uh, eliminate I any other show hosts who sometimes come across this show, though, because he hasn't been around, so who knows what he's been up to. You know, can't mm. say for sure. But he is, I have put out missing uh, Anthony Mack posters out there. I've got, I've got them on milk cartons. We're, we're starting to pick this process up. All right, so we've eliminated three people. Yeah, we've that, eliminated which, those are, Loudbeard and Herman. Okay, right, so right, so those are all else. those are all bigger names than Robert Kraft that I know of. Um, now, who can we put on the suspect list? Uh, John Travolta, my man. He's he's been known for this kind of thing, Loudbeard. Is John Travolta a bigger name than Robert Kraft? Yes, he is. 
Everybody knows who John Travolta is, Mr. Saturday Night. Come on now. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's see. Who else should be on this? Uh, O.J. Simpson lives in Florida now, Loudbeard. He's a known criminal. Known criminal. Is he relaxing with some massages and some R&Ts in South Florida now that he lives here to kind of take his mind off of the whole the whole murder thing, the whole Las Vegas robbery thing, the whole prison thing? All right. Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, OJ, I could feel that. I could feel that. Yep, that's definitely a very, very capable suspect. And his name is bigger than Robert Kraft's. More people would know who OJ Simpson oh, is than Robert Kraft. Way more people know who OJ Simpson yeah. is than Robert Kraft. Well, that was kind of the thing when they said bigger name than Robert Kraft. That's sort of... There's a lot of bigger names than Robert Kraft. People think, oh, he's a Super Bowl champion winning owner. He's like a, a huge name. Well, only if you're into sports. Like, people who were watching the Oscars yesterday probably had no clue who Robert Kraft was until that news broke. They're probably like, oh, who's Robert Kraft? Oh, a football team owner? Oh, okay. Hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, do you have any more people on your list? Um, I don't want to name any more people without getting sued for, uh, for slander. But I feel like... Of I feel like O.J. Simpson's safe to slander and defamate his character. Like it's our, I, I can't do any more damage to O.J. Simpson's character than it already has. And all I did with John Javolta is just say, I just stated a fact that he has been in trouble for this before. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to throw a name out there for you. I'm going to just say the w- name Jerry. I'm not going to say specifically because there's a lot of Jerry's in the mm, world. You know, mm, you Jerry. Can just see, I mean, it could be a... Sp- Springer, it could be it a could, Seinfeld. It could be it could a be Rice. A, well, yeah, there's a lot of Jerry's. Mm, Jerry, Jerry. It could be a Ben and Jerry. I, I'm just saying that the name Jerry seems like it could have been part of this. And, and a, 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 like, honestly, if we looked at this list of guys, there's a there's a guy named Jerry on that list. No offense to the Jerry's of the world, but all right, we. we, we <laughs> We've defamated we enough people. We've defamated a, a ton of people now. We've, we've defamated the name Jerry, John Travolta, and O.J. Simpson. All right, we'll move on from that, Chris America. Um, now, I want to talk about big news last night. The Knicks, they win. They win for the first time in Madison, Madison Square Garden since, I don't know, December, early December. So they win, and, and Samuel L. Jackson, and when he goes up to give uh, or announce one of the awards, he says to Spike Lee, oh, the Knicks won for the first time. And Spike Lee being an avid season ticket holder, one of the only games he's probably ever missed because he's winning awards, he's winning Oscars, gets to see his, or does not get to see his Knicks come up with a big win. And this is bad news for New York. They're falling further and further ahead of the Phoenix Suns for the worst team in the NBA. Yeah, that's not where you want to be. Hopefully they can get back on the road of their losing, tanking ways against our Orlando Magic, which we will talk about on the other side of this break. But yeah, Loudbeard, you do not want to win games when you're trying to tank, and you're going against one of the master tankers in the Phoenix Suns who are really, really wanting that Zion Williamson pick. And they had the first pick overall last year. They're going to try and get it this year. Um, yeah, and they did it in spectacular fashion, 130 to 118. Yeah, I mean, that was impressive, right? I think the problem is, is they got Dennis Smith Jr., so they got some excitement on their team. I don't know. Um, well, what is, what is going on with your Spurs, though? Your Spurs, you predicted they'd make it over that 50. I, I think we, you've already come to the grips, the fact that they're not going to get over 50 wins for the first time in, like, 18, 19 years. Is this a is this is this time to hit the panic button for the Spurs? No, it's not time to hit the panic button. They're gonna they're gonna sneak in the playoffs here. They'll be okay. It's just you can't win that many games every season for that long, right? There's gonna be a down season. And if their down season is still a playoff season, I would say that's still pretty darn good. And that's without Tony Parker, without Manu Ginobili, without Tim Duncan. So they've lost a lot of their talent, but they've been able to retool. They've got LaMarcus Aldridge. They've got DeMar DeRozan. They go and they play Toronto in Toronto, a very difficult team. DeMar DeRozan gets his homecoming game. He goes, and the the, the fans in Toronto were absolutely fantastic. They welcome DeMar back. They welcome him with open arms, and they, they 
they were very respectful and they were appreciative of him. And so he comes back, but Kawhi Leonard gets a late steal to keep, keep his Toronto Raptors in the win column, a one twenty one seventeen loss for the San Antonio Spurs, but no, no panic button for me, Chris America. This is a good team, but they're not going to be great. And they're going to probably get bounced for a second round in the playoffs, but they're still not a bad team. I mean, we're excited about our Orlando magic and our Orlando magic are nowhere near as good as the Spurs. Put that in perspective for you. Put that in your pipe. And smoke okay. Chris America. Well, we're also in the East where the race for the eighth seed is right around 28 wins. Okay. Where in the West, you can go all the way up to the fifth seed of possibly falling out of the playoffs. The number five seed right now is the Houston Rockets with 34 and 25. Your 6, 7, and 8 seed all have 33 wins. You could easily watch those Rockets fall all the way down to 9 if those three other teams succeed or start doing well and the Rockets, what do they have to drop? They have to drop three games and they're out of the playoffs. Like That's how tight of a race this is over here at the West. And then you throw in the Kings at 31 wins, the Lakers at, at 29 and the Timberwolves at 28, and I feel like the, the Pelicans at 27 are way too far out. I don't think they'll ever make up those six games with the other uh, the other teams at 6, 7, and 8 with their 33 wins. So it's going to be a tight race there, Loudbeard. And, you know, out of those teams that I mentioned, Rockets, Jazz, Spurs, Clippers, Lakers, Kings, Timberwolves, any of those teams do you see – which team do you see going out if you think there's a team going out and then which of the Kings, Lakers and Timberwolves do you think will slide in? Well, the Lakers have to be kind of the top choice there just because of one man, LeBron James. Once he went into playoff mode, this is a team that, that has the ability just because of him. Now, if LeBron can't carry the, the rest of these youngsters or if LeBron wasn't on this team, there would be no way I'd give consideration to the Lakers. But because of LeBron, the Lakers are the team that would sneak in. Now, I like the Kings, but I think they're about a year or two off of really being contenders, and they have to make the right moves this offseason, and I'll see where they go next year, right? So I'm going to hold and kind of just pass on the, the Kings for now. Um, Timberwolves, once they lost Jimmy Butler, I mean, they've got Carl Anthony Towns. They've got a good young core, but I still don't see them competing at that level. So – I think I would hold off on the Timberwolves. I mean, it's just the Lakers. It's LeBron James, the LeBron James effect that he could sneak in the playoffs. And who gets left out of that group? I don't know. It, it, I mean, it's a crapshoot. I could throw a dice and whatever number it lands on, you know, four through through eight, any of those guys, five through eight, really, any of those guys could be um, left out of the playoff picture. Now, I don't think it'll be the Rockets. Rockets get a big win over the Golden State Warriors just to show their dominance. Even without James Harden, they beat the Golden State Warriors, Chris America. The Rockets, yeah. they're back. I mean, that's that's the weird part about the Rockets. They're 5-5 five and five in their last 10. They lose to, what team did they lose to last weekend that we were giving them a lot of shade for? And then they bounce back and they beat the Warriors. Yeah, they're, they're hot and cold. Uh, it's crazy, this team, because last year they were so consistent and won so many games. This year it's like... I don't know. It's hard to predict They're, what team's going to show up on the floor each night. Yeah, and uh, the other thing to predict is uh, what we're going to talk about on the other side of this commercial break. Are you able to send us to commercial, Loudbeard? Um, I can send us to commercial. Uh, you'll have to put it the the stock commercials on the radio jar, though. I don't have the uh, the, the sound settings on my, 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 my cool music to lead us there. But Chris America, on the other side... Loudbeard made a bold prediction that Michigan wasn't even the best basketball team in their state. Was he right? We'll find out next. <laughs> Promo code for great discounts and events near you. When listening to your favorite show, go to the event tickets page, enter your zip code, and save that easy. 12ozsportsradio.com
Hey, it's Cody Jansen from the World Hockey Report with Cody and Adam. Catch our show airing every Friday on 12 Ounce Sports Radio at 6 o'clock Eastern Time. We're going over the best, biggest, and most controversial topics in the hockey world. You don't want to miss it. Fridays at 6 o'clock Eastern Time, only on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. Oh, what a great game. And even better, I bought the tickets on 12 Ounce Sports Radio, www.12ozsportsradio.com. Navigate to the event tickets page, where based on your geolocation, upcoming events will be listed, or you can search by your zip code. That's event tickets page of 12 Ounce Sports Radio, where you'll find a promo code that'll get you a big discount on your first purchase. Get in the game. When I'm working hard, I build up a thirst for sports. That's when I grab a cold 12-ounce sports radio. (sighs) 12-ounce sports radio. Quench your sports thirst. Do you own a small business? Are you looking for solutions to all of your communications, problems, and challenges that you have? Check out Ring Central. Give them a call. They have partnered with 12OunceSportsRadio.com to give you the best rates on all of your business and office solutions for communication. Give them a call today. We have a dedicated line for all of the 12 Ounce Sports Radio listeners. It is 1 877 779 3860. You will get a representative on the phone who will help you with all of your small business communications needs. Once again, give them a call today. 1-877-779-3860. Thank you for listening to 12 Ounce Sports Radio. If you're an avid listener, you'll notice we've had many gambling shows. Join our station. The Primetime Angle Show, The Vegas Squares, Nate Wall, and many more, as well as writers, too. With that in mind, you should join my bookie, M-Y-B-O-O-K-I-E. Use the promo code 12OZSPORTS, use all caps, and you'll get up to a $1,000 deposit bonus, courtesy of 12 Ounce Sports Radio. So be sure to go to mybookie.ag, sign up, and use the promo code 12OZSPORTS, all caps, to get that deposit bonus. Now go out there and win and cash that ticket, as Pop DiBiase says. Since you had 10 seconds to listen to this commercial, I'm sure 10 minutes won't hurt you. Mike in town, 12 Ounce Sports Radio. See you then. Thank you for listening to 12 Ounce Sports Radio. If you're an avid listener, you'll notice we've had many gambling shows Join our station, the Primetime Angle Show, the Vegas Squares, Nate Wall, and many more, as well as writers, too. With that in mind, you should join my bookie, M-Y-B-O-O-K-I-E. Use the promo code 12OZSPORTS, use all caps, and you'll get up to a $1,000 deposit bonus, courtesy of 12 Ounce Sports Radio. So be sure to go to mybookie.ag, sign up, and use the promo code 12OZSPORTS, all caps, to get that deposit bonus. Yeah, that's uh, that's me, Chris America, doing our sound effects because Loudbeard, our producer, his soundboard is down for the moment. So I have to kind of uh, make do with what I have. I, I should have him send me those uh, sound effects and stuff so I can play them on my end because I have all kinds of different sound effects over here. Uh, and, like, you know, some, some of those. I want winners. Yep, yeah, me too, Coach. I want nothing but winners. And, uh, of course, this is one of my favorites to hit Loudbeard with. Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> But I had mentioned earlier, Loudbeard, that uh, our Orlando Magic 
went up against the Bulls right out of the All-Star break. I thought they were going to come out hot, come out smoking. The Bulls are one of those teams that look like they're kind of tanking and uh, ended up coming out of the Friday night like this. Oh, no! We suck again! Yeah, I thought we sucked again. I thought the Magic were back to their losing ways. But then, yesterday afternoon, we went and played the Toronto Raptors, and now I got to hit us with this. Yeah, Slapbeard, that was a huge win for the Orlando Magic, who seemed to be playing up or down to their competition. Um, they they played low, low, low of uh, of a game against the Bulls. Should never even have been close. We got hit with the old uh, foul Rooney at the three-point line. Don't know what Aaron Gordon was thinking, fouling somebody at a three-point line, and the Bulls hit their free throws to win the game. But then we stormed back Sunday afternoon. Surprised me to see our Orlando Magic win. Loudbeard, were you surprised? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. You know, the problem is, is I watched that game Friday night, the Chicago game, and it was very disappointing. A, a team like the Chicago Bulls, who are in tank mode, and the Orlando Magic, who are sitting there at the fringe of the playoffs that need every win that they can get, they just came out flat, and they did not look like they played well the entire game. And like you said, that really just dumb play by Aaron Gordon at the end of the game to really lose it for this team. Now the Magic had a shot at the very end, and then of course they missed the shot, and the Bulls get the big victory. So you think that, okay, well, maybe this is the Orlando Magic that we're used to. Maybe this is the team, that team that gives you a little bit of hope and then comes out with a dud. Now, coming back against the Raptors, yeah, I, I would not have expected the Magic to have a great game, but the Orlando Magic, they do exactly what they need to keep doing, and that's win, Chris America. They have to keep winning to get themselves into the playoffs. They're still sitting there at, there at the ninth seed. I think they're about a game back, and it's close. There's teams like the Pistons that are sitting right there. There's teams like the Hornets that are just sitting right there, and the Magic need to overcome these teams. So these are big games as we move forward. It's going to be a tight race for that last two to three spots in the East. And the Magic, they they got to bring it. They've got to bring it each and every night. They can't have these off nights. They can't have an off night against a team like Chicago. So them coming back with a huge win against the Raptors, that helps. And that helps the confidence, too. That helps this team really move forward and go for that goal of making the playoffs. Yeah, they need to stay on top of every single team. Like we mentioned, they play the Knicks next. Um, they can't play down to the Knicks. They can't lose to the Knicks. They need every single win to matter, especially if the other two other teams that you mentioned are winning. And we need to get into this playoffs. I was going to ask you, do you did you think the Timberwolves should have tanked once they traded Jimmy Butler? Because if the Wolves make miss the playoffs, what's the point? Like, you do not want to be in that picks 10 through 14 or 15 whatever it is picks 10 through 15 like that's no man's land in the NBA draft now you might be able to find like a Kobe Bryant in there but those are very few and very far between in between yeah Chris Chris America I believe you man this, this sitting there at that 10 through 15 seed in the lottery it doesn't help you 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 really just you may every once in a while get a blind pick that ends up working out, but typically those picks don't end up adding a whole lot of value to your team. Now the Timberwolves, they, Carl Anthony Towns is a legitimate all-star superstar in this league. So they have promise. They're just stuck in a very tough conference and they have to get better and they're not going to get better this year, but they need to maybe be aggressive in the free agency, maybe be aggressive trying to make some trade ups and get the right guy in the draft, whatever they can do to retool, but losing Jimmy Butler this year, changing coaches, all of this turmoil. I wouldn't say that they would be in tank mode because there's enough talent on this team to be good, but they're just sitting there in no man's land. Like you mentioned, just on that fringe where nobody really wants to be because 
you're out of it for draft consideration and you're out of it for playoff consideration. You're just sitting there like, what do we do next? Yeah, and I, I kind of realized everybody says, oh, I'm a, free, I'm a small market. I can't sign free agents. And I started really thinking about that lately. And I think it's any team. Look at the New York Knicks. Who have they signed? Look at the Los Angeles Clippers. They're in a huge market. They can't sign anybody. Houston, they don't ever really sign anybody. Every every single NBA team that you can think of that's really good right now is a team that built through the draft and built through the trade. It's very rare that you see a team built through free agent signing, that they get that big free agent unless they already have a superstar that people want to play with there. That's how the Miami Heat built it, right? They drafted Dwayne Wade. He became an all-star on his own. They they got Shaq. They won that one championship title. And then Dwayne Wade convinced Car or Chris Bosh and LeBron James to come play down with him. I think if Dwayne Wade wasn't in Miami, that would have never happened. It wouldn't even come close to happening. So Minnesota has to either build through the draft or through trade. I don't know that they have enough pieces to make a big splash trade anytime soon. And when they're pick 10 through 15, they're not going to be able to build a team around uh, Carl Anthony Towns through the draft. So what do they do, Loudbeard? I, I, how do they make this work? I mean, this, Like I said, it's no man's land out there when you're not in the playoffs and you're not in the lottery top three. Well, this is a, a big question for a lot of GMs out there. There, there isn't a right answer, Chris America. There isn't the perfect blueprint because every team does it a little bit differently. You got to get a little lucky. You got to get a, I, I mean, what some of the teams have done is, is they go into tank mode just so that they can rebuild and get those draft picks. Do you do it like the 76ers did it a few years ago where they tanked for four or five years straight, got lucky on some draft picks, got a Ben Simmons early, got a Joel Embiid early. And if they, if Markel Fultz would have worked out, that would have been huge. And then they're able to trade to bring in Jimmy Butler and Tobias Harris. That's how they built it. it it's, there's no right answer. The problem is that when you sit there in that mediocrity, that's where you just don't know, do I really push to try to bring somebody in and make some moves to get better? Or do I maybe trade these guys for future assets, get some draft picks, and then all of a sudden tank, have a couple years where we tank, get high draft picks, and then get better? you got to understand, Minnesota – was in tank mode for a very long time. They did not have a lot of talent, and they did not make the playoffs very often. They just made the playoffs, what, last year for the first time in like 20 years since Kevin Garnett? I mean, this is a Minnesota team that has not had a whole lot of winning culture. So maybe they're just satisfied with what they have with Carl Anthony Towns, and they think that he's just going to continue to develop, they continue to move small pieces around them, and that they can be a playoff team moving forward. And I think that's where the team I think so, too. Well, I'm ready to, to eat an idiot sandwich now. You'd mentioned it. I was ready to die on that hill with Michigan. And it was a close game for about the first, I don't know, 22 minutes, 23 minutes. And then this Michigan State Spartans started to pull away. Uh, Michigan went on a dry spell there. I don't know if you watched the game at all, but they just couldn't get anything going offensively once – Michigan State pulled away, and a uh, big, big loss for my Michigan Wolverines. Uh, I might have to Sorry, reevaluate I my. I might have to reevaluate my brackets there, Loudbeard. Yeah, you may want to start uh, moving on from this Michigan squad. It, they, they seem like they're kind of falling a little bit out of the, this glory that they had at the beginning of the season. They, they're falling down, Chris America. You got to just let them go. I don't know if I'm going to let them go just yet. They're still a solid team. They're probably more of a second or third seed in the tournament now than they are a one seed that I thought they were going to be. But let's see what happens. They still get another shot at Michigan State again. They get a shot at the Big Ten uh, tournament. They have some games that they need to pick up themselves by their bootstraps and prove themselves to you and me before we can go back to hyping them up again. But one team that I do want to hype up, is our Orlando Apollos. Um, not exactly a great game Saturday night. It wasn't a bad game. It just wasn't a great game. It started off hot. We went up 9 nothing very quickly, moved the ball, and then all of a sudden just both teams could not do anything offensively. Final score, 21-17, to in a kind of a ho-hum game. There was a lot of times where 
I was doing more conversating with you or with other people than I was actually watching the game because there wasn't much going on. But there were some exciting plays. The fourth and eight touchdown throw from Garrett Gilbert where he's running for his life towards the sideline, just heaves the ball up to a wide open receiver and just gets it right there at the pylon. That was a great play. Um, all in all, Loudbeard, what was your thought going to your first Allegiance of American football game? Alliance. Yes, sir. Alliance, I yeah. love it. Yes. You like the allegiance. I think that should have been the name. We're going to change it for him. So I'm a little nervous about the Orlando Apollos because they did. They squeaked out another win. They're 3-0. and But it's not a very comfortable 3-0. and If Zach Mettenberger started this game instead of Christian Hackenberg, it could have been a different outcome. The Memphis Express, they have, they're a good, talented team. Singletary has this team on defense playing pretty well. It's the offensive side of the ball that they were struggling. And we find out that Hackenberg probably was part of that. Maybe it was all the interceptions. Maybe it was all the missed throws. Maybe it was, I don't know, but Zach Mettenberger comes in and gives this team some life. They make a nice fourth quarter comeback. It falls a little short, but you see the, the promise there. And the promise is, is that the Memphis express could be much better moving forward. If Zach Mettenberger is their quarterback and if Mike Singletary can continue to develop this defense to get better and better. I have to wonder if uh, the distractions played a part for the Orlando Apollos. We had that whole payroll thing going on at the beginning of the week, and then maybe a lot of people don't know this outside of Orlando, but apparently there are workman comp laws that says that there are no, there is no workman comp insurance coverage for athletes, for professional athletes in the state of Florida. So that's okay if you're the Tampa Bay Buccaneers or you're the Tampa Bay Lightning or the Miami Heat or the Orlando Magic. It's okay for that because you're a multi-billion, you're in a multi-billion dollar, multi-million dollar uh, sports league where when you're the AAF, you can't afford to be self-insured. You don't have that kind of money to pay for your players' hospital v- visits if they should get a concussion or a, a brutal injury that has long-term implications on the football field so what they have to do is they now now the orlando apollos are i guess established outside of florida they're in georgia now and they have to stay in jacksonville they're staying in a hotel i guess in north jacksonville and then they bus over to georgia line and practice over there so uh, everything said and done legally speaking the orlando apollos are based out of georgia now Yeah, that's craziness, Chris America. I I don't understand this whole thing. Florida, it's a bad look. Of course, we're Florida men over here. There's a lot of bad looks for the state of Florida, and this is another one of them. Um, As far as on the field action, Chris America, I know we only have a couple minutes left. I just want to point out a couple things. Birmingham Iron, another solid showing. Trent Richardson continues to be that touchdown vulture. Three TDs on the night as they dominate that Atlanta Legends team, 28-12. to and that team makes me a little nervous. That Birmingham and Iron team, man, they, they're they doing good. Yeah, and I think the Alliance of American Football has to hate that they have a have and have nots already this, this early. I think they were probably hoping for a lot more even teams, but when you see Memphis is 0-3, I think is Atlanta 0-3 now as well? They're at least 1-2. They're at least 0-2. Um, well, I can't remember last week what they're, they're – and I can't up, remember I if they won yeah. last week, but let's say they're one and two or zero oh and three. It's hard to get a new fan base into your team if you're losing. Losing is the worst thing that can happen if you're a franchise. Luckily, there are no franchise owner. Every team's owned by the AAF. But man, it's got to be hard, especially if you're in Atlanta and you have so much more to do than watch the the Legions. Like you have, you have basketball, you have football. You have, you know, Georgia Tech. There's so many other sports teams you could be watching. So tough to see these two teams go out the gates super slow. It, it really is. Uh, now, a team like the San Diego Fleet, they started out with a big loss to the Commanders, but they've kind of turned it around. They've had two impressive wins, and conti- uh, including another matchup against the Commanders this weekend where they go 31-11 and 11, uh the final score was 31 to 11. So they had a dominating performance, including a 83 yard run from Jaquan Gardner. 
So now a team that started out really slow and had bad offense, all of a sudden is turning it around. So I want to sleep on some of these teams, even like an 0 three team like Memphis, that team could still make it competitive throughout the rest of the year. So I'm hoping the competitive balance sw- swings and we see some of these other teams balance it out. That would be great. I got a text in from one of our biggest fans. Mark is listening in. He's asking, he's new to the show, Loudbird. He's asking, what is an idiot sandwich? An idiot sandwich is something that we give to ourselves when we make a proclamation of, uh, of sports, like I did with Michigan is going to be a threat. They're one of the top teams in the nation. I got to eat an idiot sandwich. If Loudbeard's sound was working, he'd play this really awesome drop where it says, what are you? An idiot sandwich. And that's me, Loudbeard. I am an idiot sandwich, and I'm going to have to chew on it until tomorrow. Uh, We will see you on the other side. Please make sure you tune in to us every single weekday on 12 Ounce Sports Radio, or you can catch us on the Barn Burner Network. Or if you miss us on either of those two locations, you can always go to scoutteamradio.com, Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, Podbean, all those other locations. Please, please, please make sure you subscribe and rate our rate us as a top top notch program, even if we're not. Just be nice, cause we're nice. Loudbeard, uh, I got nothing else left, but we gotta get rolling out. Oh yeah, I got one more thing. Got to give a shout out to my boy Nicholas. He's out there listening right now in Radio Land. He always loves it when I give him a shout out. He's also one of our biggest fans. Yeah, and we got a tweet in from Memphis Spence. Yes, Memphis Spence. The Orlando Apollos are based out of Georgia. Yeah. I don't know what else to say. All right, thank you all for listening, and have a wonderful day. Oh, wait, that's our, is that our, that's our coming back music. I think the, I think the outro music is. Boom, ding, 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 